Hey guys, it's Rogway here, and today we are looking at the, another tutorial, and uh, this is the first of a series of tutorials on HTML basics, how to use HTML to design your own websites, just the real simple basics for anybody just starting out with HTML, wanting to get maybe uh, their, their own uh, website built. So, um, first of all, let me start by saying that um, we're using a software called Moto Edit. It's a fantastic software. It's free. Uh, they do have a version called IDE, which is their paid version, but it is excellent. This is a great program. I recommend everybody downloads it. It's for Mac, it's for PC, it's for Linux, you name it. So, I'm going to start by launching Komodo. And it'll take a couple seconds for Komodo to uh, initialize to launch. you're probably going to see Welcome to Komodo. We're just going to close that. When you see this window, I'm just going to expand my window to see the full entire um, page. We're going to say New from, uh, from Template. We're going to have to tell Komodo what uh, coding language we want to use. So we're going to say New from Template. And from the list that opens up here, we're going to stick to Common Languages and we're going to look for HTML. There it is. We're going to hit Open. And you'll notice that this right here is the start of our website. And if you have never coded before, um, I'm going to explain basically what you're looking at here. Everything that is surrounded by these brackets is what we call a tag. And a tag is HTML's way of telling a browser what to do. You'll notice that a tag opens with a less than symbol and closes with a greater than symbol. Everything enclosed within this tag is a command that's telling our browser to do something. So for example, the first one is telling the browser that this document type, this file type is HTML because that's the language that we set. The next tag is telling it once again that it's HTML and the language we're using is English, EN. And what I like to do is I like to clean up my code a little bit so I add spaces between the HTML and the head and also between the head and the body and I'm going to explain what that means in a second. First thing we want to do right off the start is we want to save our document and I'm going to just go file save as in this case, I'm going to save it to the same document, same folder where my other files are located because I'm going to need them later. And sometimes you'll see on a Mac that this window comes up. It's small. If you want to see all your options, you click this little arrow on the side. And now we can access the desktop. I got a folder called HTML Basics. And I'm going to start by calling this one Part A. And I'm going to save it. All right, so we now have Part A. Once you have saved your document, you will notice that this icon right up here, this globe, now becomes available to us. This is your preview buffer. Okay, this is your preview of your um, of your website and how it's coming along. So we're going to click that. Oh, my bad. I want to hold, click, and hold and tell it to preview in a Komodo tab. And we're going to click preview with this file. And you'll notice that your browser splits into two. At the top, you see the code that we're entering. At the bottom, you see the website as it looks in a browser. This is probably, in my opinion, the best way to work. All right, we're working on our code up here, but then we're checking the code to see what's happening down here. Very, very handy. So let's get started. Let's do some basic coding. And for this first example, I'm going to show you how to use text and headings in HTML. So let's start. The first thing uh, we see at the start of our document is what's called a head or a header. And everything in the head of our document, it's almost like an intro to our code down at the bottom in our body. So everything in the head is an intro or getting us set up for what we're going to use in the body. 
And also you'll notice in the head or the header, we have this tag called title. And we're going to actually edit everything between the two words title. So I'm going to put headings and text. Now there's a couple, oh headings, sorry. There's a couple of really important things to look for here. First of all, you can see that there's a command within two brackets and the command is title. But then we also have a closed bracket, all right, where we have the same title, in this case it's called title, and it's getting closed off. It's very important that we tell HTML how much of the document is the title. If we didn't close it off, it would assume that all of this is a title right to the end because it doesn't know where to stop. So I'm calling it headings and title. And now when I save my document, or on the Mac here I can press Command S, or file save. You'll notice that what we just did when we updated our title is we changed the title of the website that appears at the top of our browser. So for example when Google is looking for a, uh, a website lots of times it'll use the title of the website as uh, something that's searchable. So it's important that we fill that out and we give our page a name. So as you can see, it's headings and text and it appears at the top. So that's what we just edited right there. Next, we're going to go down to the body of our document. And we're going to just, again, remove this line called insert your content here. Before I remove it, though, I want to bring attention to this. You'll notice that this bracket has an exclamation mark and two dashes and then this text. This is called a comment. And if you want to write notes to yourself or to others in your code, this is how you do that. And this will not show up anywhere in your website. But I'm going to remove it. And I'm going to start putting some text into the body of our website. If I just start, text, start writing and I say, hello, this is a website. And I hit save or command S or control S, depending on what... Um, computer you're on, you'll notice that in our website now it says hello this is a website. Very very basic. However let's say we want to customize our font. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to use what's called headers. And the tag for that is we're going to start with h1. h1 it means header 1. We're going to close our tag. You'll notice that Komodo gives us these nice little suggestions as to what we may want to use as our tags. So if I go H1 or H gives me all of the things that relate to that. And I'm going to use H1. And you'll also notice that Komodo helps us out by closing our tag for us, which is a common mistake, especially for beginners. So I'm going to call this heading one. And I'm going to press Control S here to save. And you'll notice now the text is much bigger and bolder because it is the first heading, the largest heading. Next, I'm going to do H2, heading 2. And once again, control save or command save, and you'll notice that they're getting smaller, but they're still bold. And I'm going to just continue on doing this all the way to H6, which is the last heading size. And I'm going to just wait to save it right at the end. Now you may be wondering, why do we have to save it every time to see our results? Um, the reason for that is a browser simply references a file. And in Komodo here, the browser at the bottom is referencing the saved file on the computer. So when I hit save, now it updates. All right. While, while I'm making changes, it's not actually saved. So I don't get to see what's happening down here until I hit save. So there's six different headings, and as you can see, they are different sizes for each. All right, so that is one way of creating text at different sizes. Let's look at another way. I'm going to just type a quick line here. I want to talk a little bit about breaks, because breaks are very important. If you want to move text to the next line of your document, the next line of your document, use a tag 
sorry, use this tag. And this is what it looks like. BR stands for break. And what that is is a, is a page break, or sorry, a line break that moves the text down to the next, uh, next line. I'm just going to type C. And when I press Command S or Control S, this is what it does. If you want to move your text to the next line of your document, use this tag. Obviously, we can't see the tag, the BR, but we know that what it did is push the word C down to the next line. If I take the BR tag out and I hit Command S or Control S, C moves up to the same line because it doesn't know we want it on the next line. So that's just a nice way of moving your text to whatever line of your website that you want it to go to. All right, let's look at something else. Paragraphs. This is a P tag. If you want your text to block together, I'm going to put it that way and I'll explain what that means. Use a paragraph tag. This is especially useful for long lines of text. All right, so what's happening is as we write the content of our website, we've got it all within this paragraph tag. And if I save that, you'll see it doesn't look any different than just typing regularly. The difference is, is if we go to make another paragraph tag, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this paragraph tag and I'm gonna just paste it below. Oh, and it indented it. I don't necessarily wanna indent it and saved. You'll notice that what it did is it automatically spaced it out nicely between. And if it was a lot of text, it would keep that block of text nicely together so that um, it's nicely contained within the, the, the tags. All right, so that's very handy. Now let's say we want to use a different font. Perhaps we don't want to be stuck to the font that comes into our um, browser by default. We're going to use a font tag. And this time we're going to add uh, an attribute to our tag, all right? So rather than just closing it like that, we're going to add a command within the tag called face equals, in this case, I'm gonna put times. And now I'm gonna close it. And I'm gonna say this is the times font. I'm gonna save it. And there it is. It doesn't look any different because the default font on my browser here is times. Now there is another little attribute that's very useful here and it is size equals and we could put a size in there too and now we can change the size of the font as well. So I can put a size in there, I can save it and then I'm going to be able to see that at different sizes as well which is again very handy because we can set different sizes of our font which is very useful obviously when we're designing a website. So let's say we want to change it from times to something a little bit more fancy or different with the font on our computer. So I'm going to go to font face equals, I'll use Helvetica. Keep in mind that you need to stick with fonts that are pretty much worldwide standard on computers because otherwise um, it won't show up correctly. So Helvetica is more of a, a Mac font. The equivalent to it for a PC is Arial. So what I could do here is put a comma and put Arial. And that tells it that if the computer doesn't have Helvetica, look for Arial instead. And if I save that, that did not work. Maybe I can't have a space. Okay, there we go. So just a comma, and now you'll see it's Helvetica font. All right, so you can see the difference between the two fonts. I can also set the size again equals, let's go five, so that's the same size as the one we just did, and you can see them side by side, two different fonts. Now because I didn't put a break in between, they are right next to each other, so what I could do here is put a nice little BR, just like I did up here, and save it, and you'll see now that the font has moved down to the next line, and it is different. All right, at the bottom of our document, you always gotta make sure you close off the tags. So we had a body tag up here. Everything that was is within the body has to get closed off, 
right there. We also notice that we had an HTML tag way up at the top, and we're closing that off down here. It's very, very important to get in the habit of looking at your tags and being able to troubleshoot in case something goes wrong, trying to figure out where that issue may have gone wrong. Make sure you save this. Again, this is part one of a multiple lesson tutorials. This is the basics of tags and how to use text and headings. Very, very basic stuff here. Hopefully that was useful. Watch part two for more HTML. Thanks for watching.